where we left off here at Michael from NCY store. What happened was it was actually too thick. Uh, the bolt wouldn't go in and it was actually stripping a centimeter into the, the, um, the metal plate. So pretty much I had to route it to the second bolt, which is fine because then we can actually put a bolt on the second one right there. You can see there and then on the back of it, how it's flushed. While we're doing that, I actually discovered a better ground I should have looked at right near. You can see here the bolt actually flushed through. So we kind of put this thing, this thing was bulky. It was pushing this outward and it kept on stripping uh, like about a good millimeter uh, into initially. So I had to actually get even deeper. So it was better just to go and put in two different spots. So even though it hangs like this, you can flex a little bit here. It curves around and then it joins here. I also forgot to mention also, you wanna put the electric grease in the exposed area much as you can where the washer is. Uh, so behind the washers and on top of the washers, you can just put it on there. You can see there's a splat of the electric grease and that will help the pretty much from rusting in that area at least. You know, you won't be able to protect this other area here, but do the best you can and protect the area that is making contact. And when we were looking at that, we actually found that there was a better ground right here in the ignition. If you can see the ignition right here, it's, it's actually better because it's cast aluminum onto metal, so there's no plastic at all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, actually use the back plating, because I think we have enough room here or enough slack here where we'll still keep this wire here on the bottom here. It's gonna tap into the same ground here. This ground traces back over here, the center, which traces to the valve cover, which then it loops another one from the valve cover onto the, the battery terminal right here, negative. So this one also spiders and it loops. This one was already there, so we just kind of continued it. And this one also uh, loops all the way over here into our little um, uh, ground here as well, or, um, you know, our frame here. And then it loops into, we made it a little pretty much like a ground block right here. These two are ground blocks, which are joined together. This one's gonna be joined with the wire harness here. And then any other ground's gonna come from this end will be joined from the ground here. But if any of this contact's not good, it still makes contact with this one. It brings it to this contact, which leads to all the way back down here. We were gonna do for one for the starter motor. But if you look at the starter motor, I, well, I'm gonna take off the seat cover, but you can see here's right there, that's the black negative wire. It comes to a harness, which comes to here. Then it comes rerouted over here. See the red wire goes directly into the battery terminal. And then it actually probably goes through the solenoid, one of them like that. It goes through this one side, the solenoid, the positive one. Uh, so it routes it somewhere. And then the, we have a positive terminal here coming to the solenoid here as well. And so the black wire, it might actually go further into splitting off and it's probably one of these ports right here for the ground. So it's 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 pretty much well grounded, the, the terminal, of uh, the um, starter motor. You can see how the ground is on the other side. See that right there? It's just grounded on this plate right there. So that's the ground wire right there I'm pointing at. Beautiful starter motor, Shen Yi. So we got, we got good uh, crank. Um, we got good air fuel. The only compression, the only thing we're having is our timing issue perhaps, that's why the engine's not starting. So we'll get started on that as soon as we get everything properly grounded. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and look into this right here. This is probably where we're gonna actually, we remove the bolts here. We're gonna go ahead and um, put this wire, we're gonna transfer this ground wire here that was leaking to the rectifier back in. We're gonna transfer this ground wire over here instead. We can even put it in the far back if we want to, which just, it's a preference, we might put it in far back, that way it puts it a little bit tucked away, not in front. So we'll see. And then it's just three bolts holding it. Uh, so let me go and get this last one off. Let's see if I can get my socket in there. Gonna need a long extension socket to work with it. There we go. Just need the socket actually. You can twist it by hand. Has a little slippery. Oh. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to do by hand. So let me see if I can just go ahead and put this one back. There we go. A little tight. It's kind of an awkward position, that's why. 
There we go. Now it's coming off. You can see. Whoa. I didn't know there was a contact here too. I guess this one meets the ground as well. So it looks like there's a plate in there, but there's nothing in there other than just the metal tapping. I guess that's how it grounds itself. So there's your ignition. Uh, just came right off with three bolts. And I guess this right here has to feel something. Huh? Feels like it retracts a little bit, just a little bit. So I guess when the key is turned on, let's see how what happens. I'm gonna try see if I can turn it. Okay, so when we turn the key on, let's see here, nothing happens on this end though. Nope. See. So I guess this might be just a grounding block for. Oh, look when it turns out, pushes in this way. So it does retract a little bit. You can see there. That's interesting, huh? So maybe this does uh, do effect on something. It has a snap or something like that. When it's off, it touches this. I guess it touches ground, it stops the uh, wing. And then when you turn it off, it touches ground, I think. So turn on. So that's cool. It's good to know. Now what we're going to do is we're going to attach and we're going to scrape this off right here. So we're going to move this over here or maybe in the back end. Let's just try to see if we can go for the back end. Now I don't want to get my um, thing here. This thing might interfere, it's might gonna rub off the thing. So let's go ahead and get our filer here again. We'll start the process all over again. So we're gonna go ahead and mount the ground, either one of these. Let's try to get this one here, the furthest one to the back. We're gonna get the paint off as much as we can. I just don't wanna pinch the wires here. If I can maybe tie strap it or something. Yeah, let's go bring a tie strap and tie strap that down so we'll catch it from that um, thing. So let me go and get a tie strap. Okay, got the tie strap. Let's go ahead and tie strap those wires out of the way so it doesn't come into harm's play. I think we can do it this way. There we go. There we go. That way we can file it without having to worry about filing the other rubber off. So I can continue on where we're at. There we go. See here, I'm trying to get the paint off. There we go. It's coming along. Make sure on the other end our file is not doing something else. You always want to make sure because you're filing, you can't sometimes. Put so much pressure here, you're not focused on, and you might, you might be damaging something else on the bottom. There we go, now it's coming along. Yeah, you don't want to make uh, too much metal contact where you're not really going to need it, because the paint do help protect the rust. But where you are going to need it, you want to make sure you file it really well. Pretty nice. It's coming along pretty good. Yeah, we just want to create a round sort of and um, around it, making sure that our washer ring fitting will actually have good contact. Yeah, I regret having to do this one because I'd rather have it painted back on. I can just spray it over with some uh, primer and then uh, paint it, uh, keep it protected again, but not a big deal. It's not going to be exposed because it's going to be a cover over it. There we go. Almost. This is like enough for a perfect ring. But we can get a little bit more. You don't want to go too deep because when you put the plate on there, if it's too deep, you're not going to have any pressure from the aluminum, um, you know, bait back here. It's not going to actually press evenly and you might, the washer might be loose. So just a barely enough just to get the, um, the solid metal. You don't want to make a, di a deep groove. There we go. Yeah, good thing we moved the, the wires out of the way. This thing can easily just... Alright, I think that's good enough right there. 
Then we're just going to clean with some brake cleaner. There we go. Just one little squirt will do it. It's going to dry up everywhere. All right, give it a good rub down. All right, so there we go. We got a good contact point here where we're going to put our washer. You can see there. Pretty much from the ignition base, ignition uh, key. So, and then also you want to make sure if you're going to apply the electric grease, go ahead and take your little towel there and try to, you know, funnel in like a Q-tip sort of, because you want to get the, all that brake fluid dried up because you're going to apply the electric grease and you don't want to serve purpose of not uh, be careful when you tighten these down too they are metal still but there's a thrust hole you don't want to over tighten them because once they strip out it's gonna be very really hard to actually make a new thread thing on the, the actual metal base so you don't want to still over tighten them just torque enough where you feel is tight good enough don't over torque it because you can always over torque anything okay so all right so there we go it's pretty it's pretty darn clean just let it fume out a little bit Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take this off. By the time we um, get this fumed out from all the brake fluid, this should be ready to go. So let's go and take this one off. This might take the smaller, oh, it's the same 10 millimeter. Okay, this left is tightening it. Okay, maybe take it by hand, maybe, yeah. You can see I started putting dielectric grease on there, Ray. It was nice. But you still can use the dielectric grease keep it on there. Because it's going to protect the uh, metal from uh, exposure to moisture and rusting. So just this one has a little bit of dielectric grease. That's fine. You want to help it anyway. Alright. You can even spread some more on there too if you want. Just to protect the exposed area that's not been painted on yet. Alright. So there goes our terminal. That was our old one anyway. That's one of our points. I think this one will be better contact because then there's no plastic at all coming to it. So now we're going to go ahead and put some dielectric grease. So I have it somewhere laying around here. I was just using it earlier. There we go. It's all over there. Okay, we're gonna go and apply some dielectric crease in that area. Just put it around the area is fine. A little glow. Just a little bit because it's gonna splat it some more anyway. There we go, just in that area. All right, then we're gonna get our terminal here. Now since we were planning to loop it there, now we can bring it this side now. So we can leave it out here. And this has some dielectric grease on there, right? Now you want to put the backing of it. I'm going to show you. See the backing of it right here? You want to put the backing of it, not the bulgy part. You want to put that actually facing the flat surface. So the more it presses here, the more it's going to push on this one as well. So you want to go ahead and put the, the bulgy part facing outward view. And then the flattest part that you can find uh, going toward the surface of your uh, contact, which is your your uh, chassis ground there okay we'll put some more in here we don't have to actually because it's going to splat the other one but you want to put in both sides let's go and protect that if you have a little open lead like this you could put a little dab inside there protect the wires in some more okay so there we go that's plenty all right so we'll close back up our electric grease so now we're going to go and prepare to put back our ignition switch module here but we're going to make sure we capture it with this so we'll go and take the first bolt for the bottom here so we're going to go ahead and thread it inside this thing is the last one here okay and then we're going to again keep the bulgy part facing us okay and the flat part damn this thing is slippery it's strong too it's almost like a snake all right i'm trying to twist it but it won't let me twist too much so i'm going to try to go with the flow this thing definitely have okay there we go this is the best right here we put that in there see I got that in there first I want to make sure 
I'll put that one in there first. Okay, I'm gonna try to screw it in. Well, probably can't screw it in yet until I line this up as well. There we go, now it's all lined up. So that'll be our front ground there. I think it's a great ground because it'll help the ignition as well. If we get grounded there, you have ground right near the ignition, aluminum chassis, and you also have the metal of the bike frame. So very good. Got it. Just not, not over tightening yet. Just want to make sure all the lo holes are aligned first. So let me go and back out a little bit. Thing went too fast. Okay. Then we're going to put the other two bolts. This one's really loose. But it's okay. It looks like it's gripping it when it gets further down. Okay. Can't even tighten this one by hand, nor this one. That's okay. So now we're going to tighten it. 10 millimeter socket should do it. Careful, it's aluminum again. You don't want to over tighten it. You don't want to strip out anything. See how that is? When you can't feel this move anymore, that means you got a good connection uh, with also the electric grease on there. So here we go. Okay, it's coming tightened down. Then we're going to tighten the very top one too here. The third one right there, there's a top one. There we go. Put my socket in there. So you have to go a little slower. There's not much wig room from all the, the metal. I mean from all the housing. But it's 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 turning. There we go. Kind of nice. And when you feel it really hard. Just go just a little bit more and then that's it. Don't don't over tighten it. Right now it's still loose, that's why I'm still be able to do it. You don't want to cross thread it. Okay. This one's still there. Let's see how this one is. See, it's getting tight now. It's getting tight. You don't want to over tighten again. This one also loose. You want to do it like a star pattern or crisscross. You want to focus on, you don't want to do one tighten. You want to make sure you can kind of tighten them all at the same time. If you're worried about they might shake loose or vibrate, just put some blue lock tight. There we go. See, I'm coming back and forth. I'm not over tightening one bolt only. So there we go. That one's pretty good now. Okay. Coming back to this one. Okay, this one's tight, can't move anymore. Can't move anymore. Okay, now I'll focus on the top. This one still looks like it still has a lot of movement left. Still coming from the outside, so. There we go. Oh, it's getting tight now, it feels like. It's a pretty long screw, but there it goes, tight. It goes tight now. A little bit more. There we go. Yeah, I can't do it anymore. Okay, so that's good enough. See, there we go. And then we'll cut back the tie strap that we started. I kind of like this little cutter here. Well, not little, but it's a great cutter though. It's a great uh, wire cutter, all crimper, but also cuts in one snap. Very strong. It's good leverage right there. Okay, so we got our uh, ground now. So let's go ahead and sum up what we just did. Now, this one shouldn't be in the way once we put the plastic housing on there. It looks beautiful, perfect. Okay, and we got going from here, which is the same ground base going through here, running through the rectifier. And then we got one, the, the other rectifier, uh, ground wire coming straight here, spider it off. And then it's gonna go, well, right now I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna take off the, um, the seat so it'll be easier to see everything. Before I can take off the seat, I have to actually take off the battery. So let me go and get the same 10 millimeter socket. And before we finalize the battery, we'll put that electric grease on this one as well. Electric is good stuff. Helps protect the engine. Electrical wiring anyway.
We just use the old bolts from the acid battery on this one. Okay. That way you can see fully the, the wiring of the ground. There it is, that's the other battery. Okay, so let's go ahead and take that off. Come back for this one. Make sure we put our tools out here because then we'll try to find it and we don't know. Okay, you want to slide this out here? So convenient that the batteries again is pretty much seat level versus going down. This one here can twist off by hand. It's pretty loosened already. I usually can't do it by hand. If you can do it by hand, make sure you tighten it down before you actually ride. Yeah, just like this will be probably vibrating. Okay, the seat will come off now. Just gotta lift the whole canister off. Let's see if I can do it one hand. Okay, let me go and put this down. kind of a tour of the wiring diagram so that way you can see if you're gonna make your same ground okay so much better here here's a great view of it now okay so what it is is we start out from here and we still have to tap these wires in here they're all gonna be individually inserted in here from the wire harness um, I could have just kind of solder each end right here to it but I kind of like this connection that way I can actually troubleshoot so I can actually pull wires back out without having to break a solder like I did before and then we're gonna connect these tail lights as well as the main tail lights like the, with the with big ground and stuff like that. The ones we have here, kind of tucked nicely in here. These ones right here. So we'll make sure we'll install these ones back in there. And again, these wires will come probably from the bottom, let's say, and these ones will come from the top. So all main wires will come from the top, including the two main grounds. And then again, these harness here for the tail light electrical system. This green wire will definitely be, you know, well deserved here because it took like five loads on it and uh, it damaged. So this is a brand new one. We can use our uh, spool of wires there and we're going to put it underneath it. You can see here, it takes a flat head. So once we spice it, you have to spice it and then get some exposure in there and you put it in there and then lock it down with that flathead screwdriver and you're all set. And then we're gonna tie strap this with a plastic tie strap. We don't wanna use metal just in case any wire exposed, we don't wanna have contact. Um, and then you can see how it's run. The ground wires are looped like that. Okay, it's tapped over. It's coming to another frame that's been chiseled and also you can see here, it's, um, it's got quite a bit of um, dielectric grease on there, kind of each layer there like layered in each one. See the bolt on, especially the base. You definitely want to put that electric piece, make sure it's covered base. So that loops on there and then it spiders off, importantly, one to the valve cover. And then the valve cover has another joint connection and this one's going to the battery itself. So it's going to get a negative ground right there. And then we have another one spiced off or spider off and it goes into the rectifier. Uh, on the very top here, the top bolt right here, that's where it's connected to. You can see it. Let's see, you can see it barely. Yeah, it's right there. It's kind of hidden right there. There's the end of it right there. Let's see if I can bring it this way. So you can see right there coming in to this bolt. And then another bolt right here carrying this one all the way up to our ignition uh, base ground right here. So that's our ground. So anything that we want to ground, we can make sure that as long as it's near this chassis area, it's going to be for sure having the ground helping it carry straight to the copper wire back to here. So that's pretty much how we wire a ground setup here. Again, we didn't want to do it for the starter, which we could have. We could change that black wire into a green wire, but that's fine because it actually comes neatly. It's There's a little, um, you know, harness cover you can't see it but it comes over here and it's joined by this plug pull it out for you how thick that is see that 
And we also put the electric grease inside of here, the female. And when we joined it with the male, it put the electric grease on there as well. So we secure that contact for our starter. Make sure it's, it doesn't have a click in, I'm surprised. Or yeah, it does right here, a little notch, it has to meet that point. Okay, and then here's the rubber boot. We're gonna put that back over. This has the electric grease to the bullet. This is from another wire harness here going to the stator. This is probably one of the pickup coils and stuff like that, you can see. And there's the ground. Uh, this ground right here, we could have maybe, it's the same. It looks like the same wire from this to the same thickness that kind of got burnt. So you can see how bad it is. It got burnt right here. So if this doesn't produce a good ground, we can always just run this straight to here and be done with. If this, for whatever reason, doesn't produce a good ground, this one right here, we can run it. See right here, and you're definitely for sure it'll get good ground because it's just spider everywhere to every chassis <laughs> from the uh, rear section to the mid section to the front section. So it's got good contact, so anywhere. Yeah, you definitely want ground because it uh, the, uh, the negative electrons need to actually circulate, so they need to find their ground path. So that one's there, and you can see if the battery terminal, it's run, it's going through the harness, and it kind of curves around. One of these might be the negative one, which is probably going to the negative terminal of the battery anyway. So you can see it's already got the good ground. And then the positive one, it might have been actually split somewhere to going back to the solenoid because normally the positive of the starter motor is connected to the left side where you have the housing, uh, I mean, you have the wire harness in this direction. It's probably connected to this one first. Uh, that's its power right there. So the st the, this one goes directly to the battery. It runs directly to the battery terminal right here. So when it gets power, there's a magnet coil that lifts up its plate and joins these bridge together. So it transfers the DC power from the battery terminal to the starter motor uh, wires here. This is actually the positive wire going to the starter motor that you see here in the junction. It's just connected to this housing. So it's going to uh, harness that's why you can't see it fully but it's not that complex if you look at the wiring system here and when you do um, install it make sure you do have good ground I hope this helps out in understanding where all the wires are and the grounds are um, if you do have electrical problem you remember pretty much check for um, the battery voltage coming out of that line if it doesn't come out of that line maybe it's, it's a positive line then you want to switch the leads make sure you switch the leads going from negative and then finding it's a positive, just like we did for the brown wire here, which is the 12 volt battery. All these will register fine, including the ground, of course, when you put the positive terminal of the battery and you check this with the negative lead. But the minute you actually put the negative lead here, it's actually already positive here and then positive here is not gonna give you a reading. But when you put the negative lead on and then you check with the positive lead, then you can actually have the 12, uh, whatever the battery voltage is reading right here. And that shows you that this line is good. It's ready to give 12 volts to your uh, rear power supply. So that's it. I'm going to go ahead and finish the work up by just putting this in here. And I'll showcase it afterwards. And then once we get all our wiring nice and tucked and clean. And hopefully I'm going to troubleshoot the Gibby and why the lights are not working anymore. Due to the fact of, like I said again, when you have a bundle of green wires here. That are thick and they're going to this one simple thin wire this size before it kind of shorted this out it might cause some more circuitry damage here because this is all the wires coming from the Gibby see they're pretty thin and this was creating a lot of spark and this is supposed to be a ground wire so with 12 volts applied to the red wire it could create the spark still but I noticed that this part right here where it ends at it was getting really hot so I'm going to try to see if this is not damaged. If the circuitry is damaged, then I'll have to peel this off and see if what's blown in there. I'm not very uh, advanced in uh, circuit board troubleshooting, but it still beats paying, what, $75 just for a dumb wire harness. And then another LED strip to make a whole complete kit if I needed to, it would be $150. That's almost like a, a normal top case cover cost. But the Gibby case, it's still a little bit more expensive to replace. But the wiring harness, it just seems kind of silly to, you know, spend $75 on some LEDs just for a, 
uh, you know, a light case. So I'm going to try to see if I can fix this. That way I don't have to worry about it and spend that money again. So that's it, Michael from NCY Store. Hope you enjoyed my video and I look forward to seeing you again on the next video where well, we're going to go and get this scooter started. You know, it's cranking, but it's not starting itself. That's pretty much the issue. By lowering the shocks, bring this down, take off the head cover and inspecting the timing because we're getting fuel, we're getting air, we're getting crank on the starter motor, we're getting spark. The only question now is, is the timing of all these mixtures. So hopefully the timing uh, cam chain is not too tight, but if it is too tight, when I re-tighten it, it might throw off my timing. We're gonna take off the stator valve cover and see the markings so we can actually see it perfectly when we take off the, the fan shroud here actually. And we can see if it's aligned with the T, and then we're gonna see if our uh, gauge is there, but we're gonna make sure if it's still too tight, the cam chain, we're gonna have to break the cam chain and put a new one on there. Okay, Michael from NCY Store. And we're gonna go ahead and give you a little view of the scooter right now in this condition. It's what it looks like from afar. It's a beautiful scooter. And Zenon, a 2019 model actually has not changed. This is actually a 2013. And um, I'm surprised, the 2019 model, I think they just kind of updated the year only, but everything was exactly the same. So, 2018 I mean. They sell for about $2,100 stock. It doesn't come with, of course, any of the upgrades like we did here from the NCY valve covers and the brake line upgrade. And of course, all the engines uh, rebuilt. So, and of course, no Gibby top as well. So that's it. It's a great scooter though. I can't wait to uh, uh, ride it once it gets fired up. Okay, thank you.